Hey everyone, welcome back to Observe. In today's video, we're going to be analyzing the nonverbal communication of Peters versus Dahmer and the recent Netflix adaptation of the Jeffrey Dahmer storyline. So we'll be looking at some of the comparisons between the two, between what the talent portrays as opposed to what the actual person themselves portrays. More on that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and roll the intro. Okay, real quick before we continue into the rest of the video, for those of you who have seen my shirts here on the channel and have asked about where I get these shirts, big fun announcement, I am actually collaborating with the company that designs these shirts and we are going to be putting out uh, our own pattern that is Observe Centered and all of the proceeds, 100% of the proceeds that will be made from that collaborative shirt will be going towards a charity that will be voted upon by the community, by both patrons and subscribers here on YouTube. In fact, that last round of voting is happening right now. If you want to go and check out the community tab down there, you'll be able to see all those details. But let's go ahead and continue through the video. Everybody was always telling me what to do. You know, my dad, my grandma, my bosses, the guys were just uh, the one thing in my life that I could control. The only motive that there ever was, was to completely control a person, a person that I found physically attractive, and uh, keep them with me as long as possible, even if it meant just keeping apart. After, after the second time. I wanna go ahead and pause here and make a couple notes already of things that are sticking out here. So from Peter's side of things, he is putting some disgust into his portrayal of what he's talking about, which doesn't exist in the, the complimentary side of it, the actual footage itself. However, that does line up with what Jeffrey's portrayal and understanding of the people around him was. He did have this level of intellectual aloofness to the people around him. So having that in there and having that disgust come in would actually make sense for the character. So that would be a good move by Peters on that front. You could also just hear tonally with the flow of their words, both sides, that Peters did put a lot of effort into trying to nail down some more of the nuances of Jeffrey's speaking patterns. And so that shows through very well here. So far, everything is lining up very, very nicely. Non-verbally, I, I have to give uh, Peters some, some kudos on this. So let's continue. It seemed like the compulsion to do it was too strong, and I, I didn't even try to stop it after that. But uh, after, before the second time, things had been building up gradually. The, uh... So I want to make a note on Dahmer there is that his agitation definitely was increasing throughout that. As you can see, even his head movements increasing. And there is some footage of that interview specifically that has been recently released of the beforehand. And it shows a very nervous Jeffrey Dahmer before this interview. So that still shows up. But even in the times that he is nervous, his, his same tone and pitch and flow exist with his verbal side throughout that. So that would also still make sense why he is able to continue that same sort of pattern throughout his entire interview. But in this area, he, you can see that agitation coming in, especially in the action up here in the forehead. And then he also does uh, a rubbing of his nose there. Now, whether that's a mouth blocking gesture or not, it's difficult to say. However, something caused his body to want to move more in that area. So something around that is agitating him. So now let's see what Peters's display of, of this similar situation is. The... Uh... You know, the compulsion had just taken over completely at that point. I wasn't even trying to stop it. I had had uh, fantasies about picking up a, a hitchhiker and uh, taking him back to the house and uh, having complete okay so i will go ahead and make note you saw the difference between those two is that there wasn't that agitation that increased in peters's performance of that there was something around anger or frustration perhaps stress even would be centered around in that display that we saw we didn't see that come in as active on on peters's betrayal but again he wasn't trying to exactly emulate that specific scene these are all parallels so he's still trying to encapsulate the idea of what Dahmer's personality would have been in that time, 
even though that specific time isn't existing. So it's still making sense. I would still say that even though these two don't line up exactly, that the betrayal done by Peters was still very, very loyal to the actual source material. Let's continue. Having complete control and dominance over him. Yeah. I mean, I didn't mean to kill him. I didn't want to kill him, but I must have. So, yeah, accidental. Drug myself, too, on accident. One time I brought this uh, young man back to the hotel room, the Ambassador Hotel. I uh, was just planning on drugging him and uh, spending the night with him. I had no intention of hurting him. When I woke up in the morning, he uh, had a broken rib here. I was heavily bruised. Apparently, I had uh, beaten him to death with my fists. I guess I just... I hoped that he could be uh, somebody that wanted to see a movie that I wanted to see. Okay, I want to go ahead and pause and just make a general note. What I'm noticing about Peters' betrayal of Jeffrey Dahmer is that he has an overall feeling of monotone, flat, uh, lifeless energy to his characteristics, which does on some level line up very closely to how Dahmer portrayed. However, the differences that I'm noticing is that the, the tonal fall off that we can hear in Peters's portrayal does not quite match how Jeffrey talked himself. There's a level of a negative turn in Peters's performance that makes his voice sound almost sad or reluctant, whereas Dahmer just sounded more like he was just casually talking about some items. So there isn't almost that depressive underlying tone in his actual vocal pattern. So that is something that I'm noticing that is kind of interesting about the differences between the two, is that Dahmer sounded almost more normal than Peters did. Let's keep watching. My Shirley name is Shirley Hughes, Hughes and I'm Tony, and I'm Tony Hughes' Hughes's mother. mother. I would like to I say, like to, to, Jeffrey say to Jeffrey Dahmer that, that, that he don't know the pain, he don't know the, the, hurt, pain, the loss, the hurt, and the mental the loss, state that he had put our family in. In the mental state he's put our family in. Good morning, Honor. Good morning, Honor. Donald. Okay, so that, the comparison between the two, I have to actually really give credit to the talent on this. This was done very, very well, even through the tonal fall-offs that, that both people were having in there, very well matched. And so when you're trying to invoke that specific emotion, what you're hearing a lot of is this 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 frailness of, the, of her tone as she's still trying to force words past an obvious knot in her throat, and the agitation coming across the rest step her body as she's trying to continually reposture because of the discomfort of the situation itself. So that was very, very wonderfully done on their part. We're about to watch this other person here and see the comparisons between the two of them. Donald, Donald Bradoff. My name is Donald Bradoff. On the, for the Bradoff family. On the, my mother gave for the Bradoff family. Five beautiful kids. We lost. He destroyed the destroyed baby. the baby of, of the, the family. family. And I hope you go to hell. And I hope you go to hell. I love, I this, love this world. world. You guys did a you wonderful guys job. Did a wonderful job. Bottom, Bottom of my, of my heart, heart. To God, to God, I got God. a lot of strength. I got a lot Thank of strength. All. God bless America. Thank you all. God bless America. Never okay, so in that one, that one was very interesting to me. What I noticed more about the portrayal on the Netflix adaptation was a little bit more anger that was showing up in the eyebrow of the area, whereas on the actual event itself, it was more purely focused in the sadness or mournful grief side of emotion. So seeing that anger and frustration being portrayed over there is fascinating to see. That being said, it didn't detract from the role, nor did it change the emotion of the role that far to be able to say that it doesn't do the role justice. So even in that, and I also had to give give note to the fact that that talent were, was able to match the vocal patterns of the actual person so, so closely. It was very beautifully done. Now we're going to go ahead and watch this next segment here. I'll never get a chance 
to tell him that to I tell love him. him. That I love Have him. a chance to tell him that I love him the last time you I saw him. You took my mother's oldest grandchild from her. You took my mother's it's oldest okay. grandchild from her. And I'm oldest sister, sister of Errol Lindsay. Lindsay. Okay, so that one there was pretty similar. There were obviously some dialogue differences in that one that kind of made it difficult to line them up exactly. But what I will say is that the frustration and the holding back of the frustration that was accomplished by the talent and that did match up very, very nicely with the actual genuine frustration that was emanating from the person themselves back in the actual trial. So let's go ahead and continue watching. Lindsay, Jim, whatever your name is, Satan, whatever I'm your mad. Name this is, is how you act when you I'm are mad. out of control. This is I don't want to ever, ever, ever see my mother have to go through this again. I don't want to ever Never, Jeffrey. Jeff, why are you? you motherfucker. That was brilliantly done, quite honestly. The things that I will still notice, though, about the differences in the portrayals is that there's much more aggression and anger that shows through on the eyebrows on the talent side than on the actual person side. Oftentimes, because it's easy to show anger with your eyebrows, it's much more difficult to show that intense emotion that was being portrayed. That being said, they still were able to nail that emotional portrayal as well, even down to being able to get the guttural tones from a very forceful scream all of that was very very well done and very fluid and synchronized had you seen that in actual real life it would have been very convincing so that was a job very well done uh, now we're about to move on to a couple other segments of this clip and then we'll be able to wrap up the video so let's keep watching your honor your honor it is, it over, is over now, now. this has never been this has never been a case of trying to get free I didn't ever want freedom. I didn't ever want Frankly, freedom. I wanted death for myself. Frankly, I wanted death this for myself. This was a case to tell the world that this I did was a what case I did to tell the world of hate that I, I did what no I did one. not for I reasons knew I was of hate sick or evil. Or I hated both. no one. Now I, I knew I was sick, sick or evil. The doctors or both. Have told me about my sickness. Now I believe now I was I sick. Peace. The doctors have told me about my sickness, caused, and now I have some peace. I tried to do the best I could. After I know how much harm I have caused, but no matter what I, I tried did, to do, the best I could, could the after the arrest to make caused. amends. But no matter what I, I did, help I could not undo the, the terrible harm I, I have do, caused. And that was hard. My attempt anything. to help identify the remains was I the feel best. I so bad for what I did to those poor do, families, and I understand their rightful hate. I feel so bad for what I did to those poor I know families. I will be in prison for the rest of my life. I know that I will have to turn to God to help me get through each day. I should have stayed with God. I tried and failed and created a holocaust. Thank God there will be no more harm that I can do. Okay. So that is that final statement there. And if you were able to track both audio tracks during that, they lined up nearly perfectly verbally, which was fantastic. And the portrayal from Peters, again, was quite monotone and flat throughout that, but it perfectly matches Jeffrey Dahmer's behavior in the actual instance itself. Now, in regards to that, I can perhaps do more videos to see the authenticity of Dahmer during testimonies like that, or in other interviews, if you would like me to continue digging down the proverbial hole of Jeffrey Dahmer, just let me know by uh, just saying so in the comments below, liking this video, sharing around, things like that. If you do want to be able to get your vote in as to which charity will benefit from the Kurt River and Observe Collaborative shirt, then go ahead and head over to the community section of my about page, of my YouTube page there, and that is being held right now. So you can go ahead and get your vote in there. If you would like to be able to reach out to me, I should be pretty active over on my socials. You should be able to hear back from me or a member of my team. So feel free to go and check any of those links out there. If you want to send anything to me physically, you can go ahead and check out the PO box in the description of this video. Thank you again so much for watching this video, but, but without further ado, that's all that I've got for the day. My name is Logan and you have been oh so awesome as you always are, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.